Hey everybody, what is going on? Today, we are going to take a look at some games that we are pumped, excited, curious, intrigued by, that are going to be at PAX Unplugged, which happens, I think, the first full weekend of December. Katie's birthday, December 7th, so that weekend. Um, and I found six games that I like. There are more, but I just picked six that I wanted to talk about that I'd never heard of, or maybe I have heard about, or that just caught my interest. Okay, so that's where we are. And I'm going to take a look at those six games. So let's stop babbling on here, and let's take a look at the six fantastically, maybe, good games. All right, so the first game that I want to look at is actually a dice version of a game that we got at, I think, Origins or something called Belgian Beers Race. And this is Belgian Beers Race Dice. Now, our friends at the board game right now have played this because they're jerks. But effectively, this looks like a roll and write version of the Big Brother game. I don't know much about it. I haven't watched any videos. That's going to go for a lot of these. Um, but from what I've looked at, and I can pull up some of the pictures, it looks like there are, you know, that looks like the map of the actual game, the bigger game. And it looks like it's just taking everything down to where instead of having a player board or main board, everyone's kind of tracking something here. So you got cheese tracks, you got, um, I don't know what that is, maybe toast. Um, you got some drinking beers tracks, uh, places that you visited. Um, I'm sure there's an alcohol content somewhere. And then you're trying to go to these different locations and get things to score points. Um, they got rid of some of the tokens, it looks like, or the little like bottles that you're picking up at the different locations. It looks like it's replaced it with some dice. I don't know how all this works again. I'm just speculating on what I know about the bigger game. So this has the hitchhiking, all that kind of thing. Um, here's an actual, maybe a better picture. So these are all the components. Looks like a really simple little roll and write with some little markers. You got some cheese counters and some gold cards. So it takes everything in the bigger game and streams it down into a smaller package, which I'm kind of into. I, I'm not a huge fan of rolling rights, but I like this game, this bigger game. I like the theme. So this is one that I want to check out. I'm not going to pack, but if I was, this would be one that I would check out. So that is Belgian Beers Race Dice. Okay, so honestly, this next one, I wouldn't have even looked at. Except for the fact that we bought a game at Gen Con. I think it was Gen Con, maybe Origins. It was called Icing on the Cake from this same company called Fox Mind. And because I like that game a ton, because it's a really fun game, this one gets my attention. There's also a roller coaster game, I think was theirs, um, which looks kind of cool too, but who doesn't like donuts? So Donuts by the Dozen um, from Fox Mind. That's the publisher. It looks like it is, let's read it, flip some delicious donuts to reach the number 12. In Donuts by the Dozen, players flip numbered donut tiles and try to make an equation to reach 12. In the meantime, the other players have B tokens they play to steal your donuts by making the right math. So a math game of flipping donuts. A lot of their games are educational, um, even in the icing on the cake. There's like pattern building and all that kind of thing. So educational, but that one has a lot of game to it. This one seems like it's more about the education aspect, which I'm okay with. Uh, that's fine. Um, but I want to give this company some love because I really enjoyed that game, that other game, and this one just looks like it's fun. So you, you got a three. Let's see if I can make that bigger. You got a three times a two plus a six. So three times two times six, you get 12. You can keep those donuts. But other people are trying to steal it with a B. So they got an eight plus a B. That's a four. So that's kind of fun, actually, a little speed math game. I'm into that. So if I was at PAX, one of the games I would want to be checking out because I'm a fan of this company, Donuts by the Dozen. All right, so the third game that I'm curious about, only for two reasons. Great Western Trail in the name. I mean, I like Great Western Trail. Main reason, Alexander Pfister. Big fan of Alexander Pfister. And this is Great Western Trail El Paso. Now, again, I haven't looked at any videos. Um, I don't know if there are any, there aren't any, but from what I looked at, it looks like a, a more streamlined, smaller version of Great Western Trail. So it's doing similar things. You can see the board here, moving around, building buildings, using the buildings, 
but there's a lot less of the other stuff going on. Again, I don't know. Looks like there's still, you know, cow cards. You got some cowboys riding some horses. You got a train. So it takes the train track still, but looks like it put, put them in cards instead. Um, just seems like a cool, different take on Great Western Trail. And I'm down for that. What does the description actually say? Standalone based on the Great Western Trail series, but plays more quickly. Compact components make for a shorter setup time in a smaller box, which is what I was get what I was thinking by looking at it. It's Great Western Trail, but shrunk down, maybe got rid of some of the convolution and made it a little more streamlined. And that's cool to me. Um, he's got done a lot of other games that are small. Port Royal is a small box. Oh my good, small box. Ton of fun game and a small package. So I'm hoping this one will be the same here. And if again, if I was at PAX, this will be a game that I would check out. Great Western Trail, El Paso. Can't have a list, any game list, without a Kinetia game. And that's what we got here. So we have Penguin Party, which I'm assuming, you can tell by the page, it re-implements a lot of other games, which is Kinetia's MO. He'll design a game in the 80s. It'll get re-implemented by every company under the sun a hundred times. That's what this one is. This is from 25th Century. This is Penguin Party. It's like it used to be a Game of Thrones game, which is weird. Um, but effectively, what you're doing in this is you're stacking up cards based on color. I looked at it quickly. Um, you're trying to build the pyramid, and you're trying to be able to play a card based on either play a card to the left or right, which can be at most eight wide, or whatever, uh, at least one of which is the same color of the card being played. If you cannot play a card, you discard your hand, you take penalty markers, and you're trying to not get a bunch of penalty markers. So this is kind of a card shedding game. And only the way that Knizia can math it out and do it in weird ways. So here's kind of what you're looking at. You're trying to play cards that matches one of the colors that you're stacking it on top of. That's it. So ultimately, the cards on the outside are going to all have to be, most of them are going to be the same color. Especially this one has to be that color. So cool, cool little puzzle that I'm kind of a fan of. So it's probably not a, a super fantastic game, but I like Knizia. The theme is fun. And I'm a fan of weird little card games, and I think this would be okay. So if I was going to PEX, the fourth game I would look at, Penguin Party. Okay, so I'm not huge on Oink games, uh, and this one's really no exception. But then I read about it, and it seemed kind of interesting to me. Again, didn't watch any videos. It's ranked pretty low. That is kind of scary. has a low score here, but I like Rio Grande games, so there is that as well. Um, but this game is a roll and move game where you're trying to get, let me read the actual synopsis and then we'll look at some pictures. Uh, a roll and move game. Quit bouncing around, geez. On a turn, roll the die, move your gondola, then see what you want to purchase. Souvenirs come in six types with copy with five to ten copies of each and the score points you need to collect three of the same type. So you're trying to move around and collect types of tokens. That's it. So here's kind of what that looks like. Um, probably not a super deep game. It's a small box, but it looks fun to me. So it's on my list. So there you go. And I don't know why my thing is doing that. Just pretend like that's not happening. But it looks really nice. It's got some cool gondola pieces. You roll some dice. The tiles look fantastic. I like that. It's just got a cool vibe. Kind of like the deep sea adventure look because same company. So if I was at PAX, the fifth game I would look up, maybe not in this order, would be Souvenirs from Venice. All right, so the last game, game number six, that I would look at if I was going to PAX is actually a game with a theme of a game we already have called Hickory Dickory. But this one's called The Watches and the Clocks of Hickory Docks. It's from Elf Creek. I know nothing about it. Again, that should be preface for all of these. They just caught my attention on theme, publisher, something caught my attention. And this one looks awesome uh it's got some cool rondelles or the board looks like a rondelle kind of reminds me of the game paris that player board looks really cool as well um looks like you have some gears here that you're building on the player board it's the watches and all that stuff um again i know nothing about it looks fantastic um i like elf creek games i know they're controversial now but yeah everything about this game has me sucked in if it's paris meets zulkin Cool, I'm down. If it's something else, cool, I'm down because it looks fantastic. So again, not a lot that I know about this. Um, 
I don't want to know about it. I just kind of want to see what's going on when I see it, and we'll go from there. But it looks really good. It doesn't say a bunch. Watches and Clocks is a strategy board game of time track management. You're playing a team of mice, Hickory Dickory Duck, that whole thing. And marketing mechanical time plates, speeds of essence, but build too quickly, and your clocks won't impress the collectors. So there you go. Gears, rondelles, and mice. Because Hickory Dickory Duck. Um, there is at least a video on this. Uh, grip man. Oh, that's not a video. That's an ad. So no videos. Nothing really here. Um, cool box. Cool theme. I'm in. So game number six. That if I was at PAX, I would check out. Not in this order. Is whatever this one's called. Watches and Clocks of Hickory Ducks. All right. Well, those are the games that I would check out if I was at PAX. Um, yeah. They caught my attention for one reason or another. Um, some of them, you can see why I like them. Some of them, you're like, why do you want this game? And I don't really know. They just caught my attention. I wanted to talk about them. So that's where we are. That's what I'm doing. And if you're at PAX, you're lucky. And maybe if you love me, you'll pick up one of these six games and send it to me. No, nah, just kidding. Uh, but eventually these games will come out. I'll pick them up or at least try them out and see if I was right about putting them on my list. So, yeah. So, you know the thing. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. Those are some games I wanted to check out at PAX. And as always, keep gaming.